Hello, my name is Firas Medani and I have worked in the summer of 2009 with Dr. Mika Skranis at the University of Michigan in the Department of Mechanical Engineering. My project is the isolation and proliferation of neural cells from C. elegans for multiple purposes. One is the fabrication of a neural network on a nanoelectromechanical system. Let's proceed with a brief background, uh, with a brief background on C. elegans. So C. elegans are very small round worms and an adult is about one millimeter in length. However, they are apart from modern organisms with several advantages. One is the short life cycle. So it takes an egg about three days to hatch and grow into a full gravid adult. Gravid as in they can generate the more eggs in the population. They are easily maintained in a laboratory setting, easily manipulated, and easily examined under a microscope due to the transparency. What makes the algae very unique is that they are well studied with well documented uh, complete genomic sequence, complete neural map with well documented connectivity and morphology of all its 302 neurons. So for each neuron, we know the function, position, and interaction with the surrounding tissue. However, the only major difficulty in dealing with C. elegans is that, that they are enclosed in a collagen pressurized cuticle. So each worm has this shell that prevents in vivo studies, makes them difficult, if not impossible. Uh, but cell culture and appearing cells from C. elegans have been demonstrated feasible and used as an alternative. Uh, however, it's still a challenging one. Um, in the Kranis group, in the Kranis group, my, my role is to integrate a large-scale cell culturing system into the lab by one, optimizing the isolation and uh, optimizing the isolation and proliferation of uh, neural uh, of cell cells, embryonic cells from ARNK4GFP labeled worms. Uh, and two is identifying the cell conditions best for the proliferation of these neural cells, uh, these embryonic cells into neural cells. <coughs> And uh, now, as I before mentioned, uh, cell culture has been demonstrated feasible, and there are several user-friendly protocols available in the literature. However, the outcomes of these protocols does vary from one lab to another, and it's recommended that each lab does modify these uh, protocols for their own purposes and based on their own resources. Uh, but in general, these methods uh, have the same structure, same components, and are divided into three stages. One is... Um, one is the, uh, the longest, which is culturing the worms. So it takes about, uh, as I mentioned, three, four days to culture these worms into full adults. Uh, and two is isolating the eggs from these worms by introducing a uh, bleaching solution to the worms, which will uh, completely uh, destroy the worms but keep the eggs intact. And uh, three is isolating the cells from the, from the eggs. And we do so by introducing a chitinase, uh, an enzyme, and running an enzymatic reaction that will digest the shells of the eggs and uh, followed up by manual pipetting that will further break apart the extracellular matrix holding these cells together. <coughs> now, however, we have run into several challenges with uh, this protocol and one in the lysis step and the chitinous reaction step. For the lysis step, if we exceed four to five minutes, we are risking the leakage of the bleaching solution into the eggs. So the same shell that encloses the worms is also enclosing these eggs, and the lysis solution can digest that shell and leak into the cells and make them not fit for cell culturing. Now, regarding the chitinous reaction, we have found we have received chitinous from different vendors uh, in uh, concentrations ranging from 400 to 2,400 units per milliliter. And uh, so it's, it's critical that we calibrate for each individual run how much chitinous do we need. And we have found a ratio of 1 to 10, a ratio of egg pellets to chitinous to be most effective and get the job done. And also, most protocols recommend that you move on after stopping the, uh, the chitinous reaction, move on directly into manual pipetting. But we have found if we take these solutions of cells, uh, of eggs, and run them, spin them in a centrifuge, we can provide the mechanical agitation to break apart the extracellular matrix holding these cells together. So once we manual pipette, we even further break apart these cells, uh, this, this matrix and releasing all the cells in the solution and they'll be suspended and ready for cell culturing after a few filtration uh, steps. <coughs> uh, so far we had amazing progress. For the last three runs, we have managed to get cells. Each consecutive run we had even more cells. So 
uh, we're moving on into our next uh, objective of the project, which is uh, identifying the cell culture conditions best for proliferation of these cells into neurons, motor neurons to be specific. Uh, and uh, we're going to do so by, uh, first of all, making sure that they adhere to the culturing plates and make sure they are available for two to three more, two, at least two to three weeks uh, in order to give them enough time to undergo extensive morpholo morphological differentiation. In order to do so, we, we're going to play around with uh, the medium. So far, we are using L15 and neural basal medium. And we'll also play around with the coating of, and the substrate of our plates. Uh, we are using phenolectin because it's a typical one used, but in case it doesn't work out for our purposes, we'll probably try something else. Uh, now, again, to show you how important this cell culturing system in our lab is, I'll give you an idea of a project we are currently working on, and that is um, the fabrication of a uh, neural network on a nanoelectromechanical system. So, C. elegans have, as I told you, well studied neural map. We'll take a 20 uh, neurons network that are intertwined as a sensory me mechanism and uh, mimic those by implanting those on a, on a nanoelectromechanical chip. So we, we'll cell culture all 20 neurons, grow them on this chip, and then test them by stimulating and, and introducing a stimulus to one of the neurons and uh, examining for a response on the other 90 neurons, uh, either mechanically or chemically. Special thanks to the Cronus group and Lisa Larkin with her skeletal tissue engineering uh, laboratory for providing the facilities and uh, lots of support. Same thing for Alan Sue's lab and, of course, Sure for providing this amazing summer opportunity. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at fmidani, F-M-I-D-N-I, at umich.edu. Thank you very much.